My name is Mallory. I am an educator with the San Diego House Rabbit Society, also a bunny parent myself, and I'm very excited to welcome you to um, today's portion of the Rabbit Fundamentals class during this bunny fest. Uh, today we are going to be talking about some common myths we often hear when it comes to bringing a rabbit into the home. We'll be discussing a few characteristics or traits that you might have that would make you a great bunny parent. And we're going to finish up by stressing the importance of spaying and neutering your pets. So let's get started by busting some common myths. One of the most common myths that we hear about rabbits uh, is that bringing a bunny into the home is a lot like having a dog or a cat in the home. And it turns out that rabbits really aren't like dogs or cats, but they're mostly like rabbits. They have their own unique personalities and they do require some specialized care that differs from that of dogs or cats. One of the biggest differences about rabbits comparing them to dogs or cats is that they are prey animals, which means a lot of their behavior stems from the fact that when they get a little nervous or they're unsure of something, they'd rather just run and hide than interact with maybe you. Another thing to keep in mind about rabbits that makes them different from dogs or cats is they don't bark and they don't meow, but instead they rely on pretty subtle body language to let you know what's going on in their bunny brain. With a little bit of hard work, you too can learn to read bunny body language, and you'll find that these critters have a lot to say. Uh, given that, if you can start to communicate with your bun, you'll find that having a rabbit in the household is just as rewarding of an experience as having a dog or cat. Another myth that we like to dispel, and this is one that's unfortunately popularized by all those cute photos and videos you see on Instagram of folks snuggling up with little buns, Turns out most buns really aren't into cuddling. Because they are prey animals, being picked up or confined in a small space can feel a lot like a big scary predator has just swooped in and carried your rabbit off. In order to build trust with a bunny, the best way to interact with them is at their level on the ground. On top of that, because buns are a little bit fragile in their bone structure, their weight is dispersed a little bit funky, and they're pretty good at wriggling out of uncomfy situations, it's always best to have buns as close to the ground as possible to avoid a drop which could result in serious injury. In order to get to know your bun, your best bet is gonna be to spend some quality ground time together. Most rabbits are pretty curious, and so if you spend some time at their level and in their space, they're more likely to come up to you and start investigating. It helps if you've got a bribe, such as a treat or a favorite toy that they can come and explore while you're in their space. A good thing to keep in mind uh, is that while most buns are relatively curious, you will need to make sure that you're paying attention to any body language cues they're giving you, saying that I'm done with ground time. In time, you'll find that most buns might uh, end up being great cuddle buddies. They might like to hang out with you while you're watching TV or reading a book, so long as you're respecting their space. Another common myth that we like to dispel, and one where you get to learn a fun new vocab word, rabbits aren't actually nocturnal, but rather crepuscular animals. Crepuscular here means that they're most active at dawn and at dusk. So if you're someone who works a regular nine to five job or spends a good chunk of your day away from the home, that's a great combo for you and a bunny. While you're away making some bacon or towing to school, you'll find that your bunny is taking a nice long siesta. 
storing up energy so they're ready to play with you when you come home at the end of the day. A myth that's been popularized by cartoon characters such as Bugs Bunny is that rabbits rely on a diet consisting solely of carrots. Turns out that carrots are a lot more like candy for buns than they should be kind of their standard bunny chow. Instead, rabbit's diet should consist mostly of nice fibrous hay. Rabbits have rather sensitive digestive systems, and so it's important that they're consuming about 80% hay in order to keep the fiber and the nutrition they need to keep their digestion system moving and grooving. Other than hay, the next important thing that's gonna be in a bunny's diet is a salad. Rabbits are entirely vegan animals. And so after they finish nursing from mom, they don't consume any dairy or meat products for the rest of their life. This means if you're someone who likes to have a healthy salad at dinner, uh, this is a treat that you can share with your rabbit is they should be having fresh greens at least once a day. Good options for greens to put into your rabbit salad include things like romaine, parsley, cilantro, or even just a solid spring mix from your standard grocery store. At the very top of the rabbit food pyramid and things that should really only be given as dessert are sugary treats such as carrots or other sugary vegetables like bell pepper. Other treats that can be given to bun on occasion are things like fruits such as apple, banana, or pear. Remember, just like you and me, Rabbits don't need dessert every day. And so in order to keep a balanced diet, treats should be kept to a minimum. Some other myths that we often hear about bunnies include things like rabbits make great starter pets or rabbits are a great first pet for young children. And it turns out it's good to set your expectations straight that rabbits require a lot of specialized care that might not lend themselves to being great first time pets. For one thing, rabbits are very quiet communicators. They don't bark, they don't meow. Instead, they use their body language to tell you what's going on in their body brain. This can be pretty difficult for young children to pick up on these cues. And so if a bun is trying to tell someone in your household that's new or a young child that doesn't quite know how to read bunny body language that I'm done hanging out for now and those signs aren't being picked up, rabbits can escalate from quiet language to less pleasant behaviors like boxing, biting, nipping, or charging. All of these behaviors can start to build mistrust between a young child or a new family member and your rabbit. And so in order to keep the peace, it's important that rabbits are always supervised when interacting with young children or new household members that aren't sure how to read funny body language. Another good thing to keep in mind with rabbits that might make them not the best starter pets or beginning pets is that they're a long-term commitment. You're bringing a new family member home who's going to be with you for the next decade or so. Rabbits can live anywhere from 10 to 12 years, uh, which means that you'll wanna plan for the future when bringing one of these pets into your house. Does your household move around a lot? Are you expecting to change members of your household often? Keep in mind that your rabbit is going to be with you through all these events. So you'll need to plan for that, as well as the financial investment that rabbits incur. Turns out rabbits aren't the most inexpensive pet, but rather uh, do require some specialized care. Beyond the food that you'll need to provide for your rabbit and the home, rabbits do require annual vet visits. And because they're considered exotic animals, this isn't always the cheapest vet visit that you could visit. Um, Unlike your regular dog or cat, rabbits are, need to visit a vet that is specialized in seeing rabbits. And these caught vet visits can cost anywhere from $60 for a standard health check up to $200, depending on the health, the age, uh, and the vet that you visit. Some standard procedures that you might have to incur every year when you do your annual rabbit health checkup include things like vaccinations, um, blood work, and occasionally parasite tests. And all of these can cost more than you might expect for your average dog or cat visit. On top of that, because rabbits are rather fragile animals when it comes to their GI tract, it's important to know that you may need to visit an emergency vet. And this can cost anywhere up to 2,000 or more, depending on the severity of the animal's illness. 
Keeping all of this in mind, if you're ready to make a good financial commitment, a time commitment, and you're willing to put in the work to learn bunny body language and supervise members of the household, they're not quite ready to make those communication on their own. Rabbits can make good first time pets, but there is a lot of work involved with them. The last two myths that we'd like to dispel have to do with the rabbit's home. It wasn't so long ago that it was very common for pet rabbits to be kept on the back porch in a hutch or a cage. But veterinary medicine has changed since then, and we now know that this living situation is not sufficient for rabbits. Turns out most cut cages and hutches aren't enough space for a bun to live in. A single rabbit needs a four foot by four foot space in order to stretch, move around in, and have separate areas to eat, sleep, hide, and toilet. Uh, by giving them sufficient space, you're really going to let your rabbit's personality shine. Not only that, but you'll need to have space for your rabbit to exercise, as they shouldn't be kept in a cage all day, but need about three hours of time to exercise in order to do zoomies, binkies, run around, and interact with you every day. The other issue with cages and hutches is they're often difficult to clean, which can lead to unsanitary living conditions. Also, those get smelly. Um, having a pen inside, such as an exercise pen, often marketed for puppies or cats, uh, can be a good option for having an inexpensive, easy to clean rabbit home base that you can keep indoors. The last thing to note about cages and hutches is they're often made with wire flooring, which we now know can lead to injury on rabbit's paws as it often leaves sores from extended pressure points that are uh, put onto the wire flooring. The last thing to note about buns is that they really do need to live indoors. An indoor rabbit is protected from what we consider the three Ps, predators, parasites, and precipitation. Rabbits are easily frightened animals, and here in San Diego, we do worry about some common rabbit predators, such as coyotes, dogs, and hawks. By keeping your rabbit inside, you remove one level of them ever encountering a predator. Not only that, but you get to control the environment in. Because rabbits are easily frightened, sometimes even the sound of a predator, like your neighbor's dog barking next door, or maybe the lawnmower going off um, down the street can be enough to cause anxiety and stress, which can lead to further health complications. Keeping your rabbit indoors also puts an extra level of security around them regarding parasites. Rabbits can pick up fleas, ticks, mites, all of which are often found outdoors. So by keeping them inside, they're less likely to encounter those. Additionally, here in Southern California, we're also particularly worried about the rabbit hemorrhagic disease virus, or RHDV2. This virus is currently found in wild and domestic rabbits here in San Diego County, uh, as well as large part of the United States. And so by keeping your rabbit indoors, you are adding an extra biosecurity measure to prevent some routes of exposure for this virus. The last P, precipitation also includes things like climate control. If your rabbit is living indoors, unless your upstairs neighbor has a plumbing leak, it's unlikely they're gonna get rained on. In addition to that, indoors means that you can control how hot or how cold their environment is. So it's unlikely you'll have a rabbit that's overheating or getting too chilly. The last thing to note about a rabbit that lives indoors is that's a rabbit that you're going to be interacting with a lot more. It's important for the rabbit's socialization that they're getting to see you and interact with you. And it's important for their health that you're getting to keep an eye on their behavior um, and check them out every day for any changes in uh, health or behavioral conditions. So those are some myths that we often hear about rabbits. Uh, if you consider all of these in total, we need to consider if you could be a great rabbit companion, think about whether or not you have the time and the money to commit to a bun, if you have the space indoors to give them a nice healthy home, and if you're willing to put in the work to learn to communicate with these animals. All of this sounds like something that you're interested in. You could be a great bunny parent. 
These animals are very rewarding to work with as they all have unique personalities uh, and they can be a great companion for up to 10 years. The last thing we want to cover in today's class today uh, is in the importance of spaying and neutering your pet. Once you've decided that you're the right home for a bun and you've brought one home, one of the first things you want to make sure you've done is have your animal fixed. There's a couple of reasons for this. Um, the first being that you would like to prevent some pregnancies or unexpected litters. They don't say breed like bunnies for nothing. Your average female or doe rabbit is capable of having a litter about every 30 days. It's also possible for a female rabbit to give birth one day and become pregnant on the very same day. Male rabbits are considered sexually mature at about 12 weeks. And so if you consider all these numbers in total, it's easy to see how two bunnies can quickly become many bunnies. Uh, rabbits are the third most common found pet in shelters here in the United States behind dogs and cats. Uh, so by spaying and neutering your pet, you can help relieve strain on shelters by preventing unexpected litters from ending up in a place where they are now looking for a home. Other important reasons to spay and neuter your pet has to do with your pet's behavior. By fixing your animal, you'll find that it reduces a lot of the hormonal behaviors that are less than pleasant in rabbits. An unfixed rabbit is one that's more likely to display behaviors such as spraying, which is where they leave urine stains all over the place, as well as tend to have less pleasant temperaments. They're more inclined to bite, to nip, um, or to lash out. Spaying and neutering often fixes a lot of these behaviors, as well as improves litter box training. Another thing to keep in mind is a spayed or neutered rabbit um, has a better health outcome as these animals are less likely to encounter certain types of cancer, such as uterine or testicular cancer. Female rabbits in particular are highly prone to uterine cancer. And so by fixing your rabbit, uh, you can extend their life by multiple years um, to prevent them from contracting this disease. Another thing to keep in mind is that a bunny that's fixed is a rabbit that can have a companion. Rabbits are notoriously difficult to sex. And so even if you think you've got two boy bunnies or two girl bunnies, it's never safe to put them in the same enclosure um, unless you are sure that both animals are fixed. In addition to that, a fixed animal is much more likely to uh, interact in a pleasant way socially with other rabbits and is much easier to bond if you are looking to have a pair or more of rabbits at home. A good thing to know is that most shelters, including the San Diego House Rabbit Society, uh, put the effort in in the beginning and all of our rabbits have been fixed before they go out for adoption. That's it for today's rabbit fundamentals class. We hope you've learned some fun new vocab, picked up some tips about rabbits, and are excited to see the rest of Bunny Fest. Thanks for hanging out. Archie. Archie is a curious young Dutch mix who is approximately eight months old. He was a stray rabbit wandering a neighborhood flower bed with his siblings. His sister was adopted through the county shelter and little Archie is now at SDHRS waiting to find his forever home. He's very active and loves having space and toys to explore and play with. He'll need lots of enrichment and exercise time to be happy. While a little standoffish, Archie is very curious, so spending time in his space and letting him come to you will help you earn his trust and affection so you can give him pets just like our volunteer is doing here. As you can see, just with getting to know him, he will give you lots of love and will accept lots of love. Archie is a very active and friendly bunny and he would prefer a free roam home or a space where he would have lots of room to explore. 
Archie would make an amazing addition to any family. Thanks for watching. To learn more about Archie, go to San Diego Rabbits.org. Introducing Charlie. Charlie is a Holland Lop male who is approximately two and a half years old. He is a very active and friendly bunny, but he also has an assertive side. He likes to interact with people on his own terms and he will happily hop away and do his own thing once he's decided he's had enough socialization. As you can see here, he is wanting human socialization as he is hopping up right up to one of our volunteers. Charlie enjoys having tunnels to play in and lots of chews to keep him from getting bored. If he puts his mind to it, Charlie can be quite mischievous and may chew or get into places he isn't supposed to. So Charlie is one of those bunnies that you have to keep your eye on to make sure he's not chewing on anything he isn't supposed to. But as you can see, he is a sweet guy and loves to accept the socialization when he wants to. Charlie is a very handsome bunny and would make an amazing addition to any family. To learn more about rabbit proofing, you can go to our website, sandiegorabbits.org, and contact us about how to rabbit proof your home to get ready for Charlie as he likes to chew and get into places he isn't supposed to. But if you have your home rabbit proofed, this will help Charlie know what places he is allowed to go to and allow him to only chew things he is supposed to. Thanks for watching. To learn more about Charlie, go to sandiegorabbits.org.